Okay, in this video we're checking out the iFlight Success Mini F4 flight tower system. Uh, it's a 20x20 20 20 stack here with three boards. You got a video transmitter, F4 flight controller, and a 4-in-1 ESC. And this is actually pretty high-end stuff here, but the price is very reasonable. Uh, this is, uh, in terms of features and specifications, similar to the Emax uh, Mini Magnum F4, which is also 20x20. 20 20. Uh, also, um, the ESCs are, are kind of similar, 35 amp, 4-in-1, BL Heli 32 ESCs for both, uh, both have four, um, they both have a video transmitter that's power switchable, uh, yeah, very similar in features, the price is uh, quite a bit less for the iFlight product here, it's like $64 for the stack here as you see it, I think it's about $100 for the Mini F4 from most of the places I've seen, so. Not quite sure how they're getting the price down so much on this stack. Uh, you know, the, the ECs look like they're a little bit smaller in size, so it might fit better in in, in your particular micro build. Uh, the video transmitter is not a half size like the Emax; it's a full size 20 by 20. Uh, they're all connected by pins here. You can see between the uh, video transmitter and the uh, uh, flight controller and then the flight controller and the foreign EC. So if you don't like pins then that could be a downside for you but there is a one long uh, M2 screw that goes through everything here and then you have all these little TP parts along with a little silicone uh, these little washers here for vibration dampening. So the MP6000 gyro on here shouldn't really be getting too much uh, vibration here. I did show this uh, earlier on the IH2 video, uh, but then uh, some people were asking me to get a, take a closer look at this and sort of take it apart. So that's what I'm going to do is I want to show it to you first as it comes assembled. It looks like this with the TPU parts, the, the screws and the nuts already on there. You can see there's this little TPU part here that holds down the little micro FL antenna. So that's going to hold that down and what probably will prevent it from coming out in vibrations and stuff like that. Uh, you may want to switch that out for a different antenna if you don't like whip antennas. This is the one that it comes with. It didn't come with a XD30 or XD60 lead here, so I'm not sure. This came along with the IH2, so I'm not sure if uh, this is a pre-production, non-retail packaging, so it might come with one. I'm not sure. This is exactly the way it came to me, like this already assembled. So we'll go ahead and I'll take it apart, take these screws out, and then we'll look at each board. A little bit closer and I'll talk about the uh, specs on each board in a little bit more detail. Okay so I uh, took the video transmitter off here and we have a 40 channel video transmitter with a uh, power switchable between pit mode 0 milliwatts, 25 milliwatts, 100 milliwatts and 200 milliwatts. You can see that the pins are on this side of the board. You have some capacitors over here and it looks like a voltage regulator. And the um, uh, video, or I guess the, remote, the VTX remote control is on UART3 and it's using the IRC tramp protocol. Not smart audio, but it is obviously VTX remote control. If you don't want to use the pins here, then there are some solder pads here. So you have your audio ground, 5 volts ground, uh, battery voltage, I think that's video, and then TX I think is your uh, VTX remote control. That's going to go to your flight controller if you happen to be using this with a different flight controllers. So yeah, if you happen to want to buy this separately, you could do that and just use the solder pads and not have to use the pins. And then of course, if you want to use the old school button, there the button is right here. And if, and the uh, screw holes, uh, screw mount holes are M2. You have your lights here for channel band and power if you want to use the button. But yeah, pretty basic looking 20 by 20 video transmitter up to 200 milliwatts. Okay, so here's a look at the flight controller. You got your USB ports, lights there, uh, boot button. You have your OSD chip, and that looks like the gyro there. Pin connections here. This is for your camera up front here and your receiver back here. Uh, this looks like also solder connections for a receiver. You have breakouts for your TX1, RX1 as well there, and additional solder pads for uh, TX3 and RX3. And on this side of the board you get your F4 chip, your voltage regulator. I think it's a 5 volt 3 amp EC. Uh, you got a little port here for your LED buzzer. And I'm not sure what this one here is for. Get your pins here for connecting. I think that's to the 
Uh, 490 C goes like this. And then over here on this side of the board, you have your uh, solder pads for uh, TX6 and RX6. So all three UARTs are available. So this is a, a benefit, I guess, or a uh, I guess something is better than uh, on, than on the Emacs uh, 6x uh, 6s stack. This one has uh, you can basically have you know, utilization utilize all of the UARTs versus the Emacs stack. Um, it's, you're kind of limited in what UARTs you can use because everything is like there's one for the receiver, there's one for the smart audio, and I, I believe the last one is not available. So only two out of three is available in that one. I think this one you can use all three. And here's a look at the uh, 401 EC, uh, BL Heli 32, 2 to 6S, 35 amps. Uh, not exactly sure to burst to. Check the link in the description if you want to see the burst rating. Obviously, D shot 1200 with. Uh, the 32-bit firmware on here. You got solder pads on the top and on the bottom. Same with the battery leads. And uh, yeah, you see the MOSFETs for the, on the inner side there. You got some capacitors there. It looks like there's some solder points here that where there could be a micro connector that was possibly in a, a previous revision of this. But you may be able to use that. If you can solder on your own microconnector, if you're into using microconnectors, you can see your ground uh, VBAT and your four motor wires. But then obviously, I think the main connection is going to be via this uh, pin connector here to the uh, F4 flex drawer. Obviously, yeah, these, these are all meant to go together, so um, yeah, I'm just going to have to you're going to be using the the pin setup here. And you know, with the steel screw going through everything, along with these uh, other parts. Uh, less likely that it's going to break. Um, usually they break when you're using the nylon standoffs and then in a crash the nylon standoffs will, will end up breaking whereas the steel ones usually don't. So um, if you're concerned about that I wouldn't be too concerned. It's, these steel screws do usually hold it better and the pins usually won't break in a crash because of the steel screws. Anyway that's going to do it for this look at the Success Mini F4 flight stack. I think this one is actually better than the Emacs version. The ECs are a little bit uh, better sized. Now, I don't know about the video noise because the Emacs has two huge capacitors on there, so that was very little video noise in there. I didn't see a lot of video noise on this stack here using it on the IH2, but that was only on 2S. Uh, obviously, uh, going up to 6S, things might be different. You might have to add your own external capacitor on there, like a maybe a thousand microfarad, 35 volts, something like that, uh, to cut down video noise. We'll see. I'll, I'll probably put this in something a little bit bigger. Then a two inch, probably like a three inch at some point. So you might want to stay tuned for that video. But I don't expect any issues. I, I know they did a lot of testing on the noise and that kind of stuff for this one. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be okay. But I think that this stack here is a better value. It's coming in around 60 to $65. Uh, way less than the $100 Emacs and very similar feature set. And I think that all the UARTs are going to be available to you on this flight board versus the Emacs board. Uh, the video transmitter is a little bit bigger, but the ESCs are a little bit smaller, but the, the capacity of the ESCs is also 35 volts, so really no difference between that and the Emacs uh, 6S 32-bit ESCs. So overall, I think this is going to be a good stack to use for your micro builds if you're going to be going up to 6S. You know, obviously, most people are probably going to go up to 4S. Maybe you can do something like a 4-inch on 6S. I don't know. That's Obviously, that you're probably future-proof. There's going to be different kind of motors and frames and stuff coming out in the future. Right now, 6S, not so sure. Viable on micros, but uh, yeah, I think there's potential there to use this in something that's going to come down in the future. Obviously with 32 DCs and up to 6S. So who knows what the future will bring. And this, this stack will be ready for whatever the, whatever comes in the you know, coming uh, months and, and uh, into 2019. So... Overall, I would recommend this stack. Uh, if you guys want to check it out, there's going to be links in the description below. If you guys have any questions, let me know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.